Hello and welcome back to our YouTube. It's been a little over a month since our last RV7A update and I am happy to say that we have finished riveting the wings and are ready to attach the wingtips. In this video, we're going to talk about the type of rivet gun we used, how we set the wings up to rivet, and some general tips we learned that made this whole process a lot easier. We also took a drive up north to visit an EAA chapter who was hosting someone we all eventually have to meet. We ventured out to Connecticut to the EAA Chapter 27 meeting. Got an email from EAA about there being a presentation from a DAR. And we figured building an RV, building other planes, why not come out and see what it's about? Great group of people, big group of people. It was actually overflowing out of the, the room. You know they won you over when it's worth the hour and a half drive that we'll be back. Or half hour flight. We don't have an active EAA chapter near us on Long Island, so it was really fun and refreshing visiting this chapter. It was so welcoming and it was nice to talk to other builders who are actively flying the airplanes they built. It gave us a shot of renewed excitement to get home and finish the wings. So let's focus on those bottom skins, starting with the access panel. We just drilled out and deburred the rivet holes for this little nut plate. We're going to enlarge these and then we're going to dimple them. Let's go. Cover fits on nicely. Screws on when we're done. And that's the final prep we need for the skin. We've been prepping these skins on and off for the past month. And if you want to see more and learn an awesome tip to remove the blue protective vinyl on the skins, you can watch that here. The plans recommend filing the skin where it overlaps with the inboard skin. Lots of advice on Van's Air Force about how to do this. Using the Dremel and files followed up with some sandpaper worked for us. We ordered one of these edge rollers from Aircraft Spruce and are so glad we did. It puts a nice crease on the edge of the skin and makes it blend really nicely. Bottom of the skin is primed. We're running out of excuses of why we can't start riveting. Our compressor broke. So, emergency trip to Harbor Freight, picked one up. Some people choose to rivet the bottom skins with the wing laying flat on a workbench. We decided to rivet with the wing vertical in the stand in part because of my height. I was too short to be able to reach the middle of the wing and as I'm wielding the gun, this needed to not be a struggle for me. As you can see, Cliff definitely got the short end of the stick with bucking. There were some interesting positions going on reaching that rear spar. While riveting can be done with one person, I think it has to be a lot easier with two. And I really applaud every builder who did this single-handedly because this was stressful. I don't mind admitting that tears were shed over some of my first riveting attempts, and even with lots of practice rivets, there's something different when you're holding the gun up to your actual project. This would be a good time for us to talk about the rivet gun. It actually took us a while to figure out what type of gun we wanted to buy for this project. Two times or three times? There are so many discussions online about this, but we decided on the three times gun. While we could have finished the entire project with it, it is slight overkill for the size of rivet you use for the wings, and I can personally say that I felt like I didn't have full control of the rivet gun until we broke down and bought a two times gun midway through, which is slightly smaller and essentially gives lighter and more blows per trigger squeeze. Me feeling comfortable with the two times lowered my stress level and definitely cliffs as well. Everyone has their own method with the riveter and the bucker. Ours, we kind of just developed. The way we do it is when I get it on the back, I say, okay. Okay. Janie stabilizes it. I say, go ahead. Go ahead. She rivets. Depending on how much more I think, it's going to either be keep going a little bit more, 
One more, and then good. A little more. One more. Good. No. Go back. No. All right, here we go. Starting to spark. Any builder who refused to wear a tube sock on their arm while bucking through the lightning holes probably had an arm that looked like this. And I just want to let you know that your ulna nerve is seen and appreciated. As you can see in this shot, we have purple tape separating the outboard two bays. This is simply showing the reach that Cliff had through the lightning holes from the wingtip so we knew we could finish riveting that Ford spar without those done. I went to Staples on a mission to find the perfect rivet back tape, but I am happy to report that after testing a few different scotch tapes, they all remove the exact same from aluminum and it does not matter in the least. Cliff used the tungsten bar the most consistently, although there were some rivets along the rear spar that he preferred the other for its reach. Again, there's a lot of advice to use a swivel head on the rivet gun, but we ended up sticking to the mushroom head and it worked just fine. Overall, we're so happy that the riveting is done on the wings. Definitely a satisfying job, but also pretty stressful. We've taken a break the past few weeks to get some flying in, some needed springtime homeowner maintenance, and to enjoy the warmer weather, but we are looking forward to getting these wingtips on and the wings out of the garage, hopefully by Memorial Day. As always, thank you so much for watching and please subscribe. See you next time. Just don't get too cocky. Okay. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> but I, want, I would rather tell you a little bit more. Yeah.